So Boston is full of Dunkin' Donuts. I think that's a staple around here. I'm more of a Krispy Kreme man myself. However, the place I'm about to, uh, to go to has got quite possibly the best donuts on the face of this earth. I'm talking about Cane's. And if you haven't been, well, you're missing out on a treat here. type of chat but if you visit Boston you've got to visit Keynes. Boston it's a great city it's a great town uh, but it's not all about the concrete jungle there's a lot about Boston that uh, you never see on TV I'm just walking into one of those uh, one of those places now It never ceases to amaze me. I've been coming here for a number of years and um, I've never come across this place before. It begs the question, what have I been doing all this time? But as I said, it's not all about concrete jungle sometimes. Sometimes it's just about the, the location. The Freedom Trail. Well, the Freedom Trail is a collection of 16 iconic sites which are dotted all over old Boston. And together they pave the history of Boston in the early 1700s to the mid 1700s, pre independence. And Boston's always been a key player in uh, American history the Boston Massacre uh, and the Boston Tea Party being pivotal points in American history which sparked and fueled the revolution, which freed the then 13 colonies of what was then the New World from the colonial grip of the then King of England. Now, in order to visit these 16 sites, um, it's been made quite easy for you as long as you follow the, the Yellow Brick Road. But in actual fact, it's the Red Brick Road. There's a red line which runs all the way from the information centre, which is in front of me all the way to Bunker Hill, which is two and a half miles in length and dotted around the, um, the, uh, the, red, the red road, the red pathway, are brass plaques which point out the various sites. Now, I'm not going to go into all of them. Um, what I am going to do is walk the two and a half miles and point out the various sites along the route. The best way to experience this is basically to come here and do it yourself and if you do there are some independents um, who will walk you around that two and a half miles and point out the various uh, historical um, facts that you might need to know and I actually think it's actually quite good value for money because um, they give you much more of the history than I, than I ever could or you can just do what I have always done and just walk the, uh, walk the line yourself but anyway, enough rambling. I'm going to go off and, uh, and do this now. 
uh, and we'll see what we find. I should have actually mentioned that the information centre is actually in Boston Common. So behind me is the Bunker Hill Monument and it commemorates the Battle of Bunker Hill. Now, ironically, the actual battle wasn't behind me, but it's where the monument stands and it commemorates the battle that the British actually won. But this is the end of the Freedom Trail, so that's two and a half miles. Um, I possibly haven't indicated where all the sites are. I'll have a look back on the on the video and uh, and check. But if I haven't, I'll put a list of the actual sites that you need to visit should you come to Boston. But that's the end of the, uh, the Freedom Trail now. Back to Boston. Today I thought I'd come down to Rhode Island, um, and I'm currently in the grounds of the Vanderbilt House. You may remember the name from yesteryear. Uh, they're a family that uh, made their money in the uh, in the railway. House is massive. Uh, clearly, the family were multi, multi, multi millionaires back in their day. And today, I would suggest the house is called the Breakers, or the property is called the Breakers, and it's um, it's on a on a cliff edge. massive house um, and it's currently owned run by a trust it's almost like a national trust type of affair uh, but it's well worth coming down to see uh, and again i'm surprising myself with um with some of these uh these these new things that i'm doing uh, every time i come to boston always something to do wandering around the uh, opulent houses of newport rhode island 
brought out the artist in me today. So I went down to South Boston earlier on this evening to a hotel bar called Aloft. Uh, and in the bar was a, uh, a company called Paint Night Boston. And basically the premise is that a group of people pay to sit in a bar and paint a picture whilst being given instruction uh, in how to do so by the, uh, by the artists that run it. Now, I'm sure that uh, the thought is currently spending evening painting when you've got all that outside in Boston, but actually it was really good uh, and you can't help but take it seriously even though it's a fun night out. Now I'm clearly not an artist and by the look of my effort you might agree but it's not about being perfect it's about doing something out of your comfort zone uh, but in a, uh, a fun and relaxed way. And the type of, this type of evening was the, uh, the brainchild of an MIT IT student, believe it or not. And it's all over Boston, so it's, it's not as weird as it sounds, but it's well worth a try. I had a great night out, um, something I haven't done before, uh, but I'd do it again in a heartbeat.